Welcome to St. John's Worship at Home. Do you remember the saying, children are to be seen and not heard? Now if you're older, this is exactly how childhood seemed when you look back. Adults are very powerful and children not so much. In Jesus' day, childhood was precarious because of sickness and war. Children who did grow up were put to work as soon as they were physically able. Children were valuable only once they became adults. Today, Jesus shows us that God loves the little ones, those who are vulnerable, needy. He challenges his disciples and us too to stop playing power games and to realise that we are loved by God freely and fully. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. But it's from this space of security that we are called to love all the little ones in our world, whether adult or child. Let us pray. Loving, gracious God, who does not put us in order, greatest to least, best to worst, loved most to loved least, or in any other order, be with us as we spend time with you today. Help us to listen to you as you speak to us and challenge us, love us and encourage us. Amen. Let's hear God's word today from Mark chapter 9. Jesus and his disciples left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is God's word for today. When I was a child, I remember hearing this saying, children are to be seen, not heard. Now, for a fidgety, question-prone little boy like me, that was pretty difficult. I remember being told many times to be on my best behaviour, especially when visiting older relatives. The same applied in church, where I was to sit still and keep quiet. I started school in 1972 and my memories of school from the early days are of sitting in straight rows of desks, one behind another, and not speaking unless being spoken to and being wary, even afraid of the teacher standing at the front, whose job it was to impart information to me. I don't think anyone had heard of inquiry-based learning way back then. To be a child is to be aware of a lack of power. I remember walking up Cross Road from Fullerton Road to my grandparents' house in Myrtle Avenue, Myrtle Bank. It seems such a long and steep walk. I look at it now, it's less than 500 metres and it's at most a 3% gradient. I realise now that my legs were short, my stamina not too much and my perspective limited. In many ways, our culture today privileges the needs of children. We ensure that our children are give, given every possible opportunity to succeed. The state provides three levels of education so, so that our children can maximise their talents and skills. Some people would say that this is the best time in history to be a child, certainly in a country like ours. Now, the world in which Jesus lived and taught was radically different. Childhood was a dangerous and terrifying time in the Middle East in the first century. Three in ten children died at birth, and of those that lived, 
Another three in 10 died by the age of six. And six in 10 died by age 16. While children were loved, they were also seen as security, as people who could get to work as soon as possible, who would care for their parents when they aged. So to be a child was to be someone who was extremely vulnerable, who had very little status, and who was expected to be useful from a very early age. Today we read, Jesus took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. Now this action might seem quite unremarkable today, but not in Jesus' world. Children were not to be seen, much less heard. The question might have in fact been, what is this child doing in this adult space? And in fact, a little later on, Jesus' disciples criticised parents who bring their children to get blessed by Jesus. Jesus in turn takes them to task and says these beautiful words, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. If we read through Mark's Gospel, we see that Jesus has a deep concern for children. Jesus heals two children burdened by an evil spirit. He raises from the dead the daughter of Jairus, the head of the local synagogue. We paint a picture of someone who sees the people that others ignore, who wants to ensure that they know that they are loved as much as the big and powerful are. Now, there's a backstory to this incident. Jesus had just given his disciples the grim news for the second time that the Son of Man, Jesus himself, is going to be handed over to men. They will kill him. After three days, he will rise from the dead. Now, you would think that this was clear, but clearly not for the disciples. Mark writes, they didn't understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Now Mark tells us that they had argued about which of them was the most important. This is something that we as adults do a lot of the time. We want to know where we fit at work, where do we rank, who is above us, over whom do we have authority, who can we boss around, ask us to do stuff. Who do we have to listen to? Now, Jesus' disciples were real flesh and blood people like us and flawed too. Now, from my memory of school, kids do the same thing. Rank people on the playground. Who's chosen first? Who's chosen last in a game? We compare test results, or at least we used to. But I reckon the disciples we're also talking about not just about who was the greatest, but what greatness actually looks like. If Jesus was a great man, uh, a great teacher, a great leader, as they believed, because they'd seen him do all these amazing things, then it made no sense that he would die such a terrible, shameful death. Surely God would ensure that he received a king's welcome and they with him. The spoils of power would be his. Jesus always knew what was going on in their minds. That was one of the perks of being God. So he sat down, as a teacher did when he was about to impart some new learning. We could call this lesson, show and tell, or in fact, tell and show. First of all comes tell. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last. They must be the servant of everyone. Okay, Jesus said, you harbour the ambition to be first, to be great. Well, good on you. But let me tell you what it looks like. Aspire to be the greatest servant. Seek the glory of serving others. 
Now, I expect that we would bristle at this teaching today because that's not the way the world operates. Do this and you'll get walked over, trampled on, overlooked for promotion. And perhaps these kind of thoughts were running through the disciples' minds. So, time for part two of this lesson, which is show. As we heard before, Jesus took a little child, had the child stand among them, took the child in his arms and said, anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Now, this child had little status. He or she only became a full person when they were productive. The disciples saw them as annoyances at best. But to Jesus, these little ones, these vulnerable, are the very people God calls us to care for. And Jesus says, when you do this, you're welcoming me and God the Father who sent me. I'm the one who is going to sacrifice my life for all people. That's why I'm heading to the cross. My death is going to be good news, especially for those who have no power, no hope, who believe they have no future because life has trampled them down and others have disrespected and ignored them. This is a beautiful, touching episode in Jesus' life, but there is also a sting in this tale. Being great is about serving, not about bossing others around. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that those of us who are managers should walk away from our role or teachers hand over the running of the classroom to the students. All of us, no matter what our job or what we do in our home or in the community, we have a certain amount of power. The question is, how do we use this power? To advance our own cause or to make people beholden to us? Do we act respect respectfully, lovingly, seeking the best for the people in our care, using our skills and talents to make their lives better, not take advantage of their needs and vulnerabilities. The third time that Jesus told his disciples that he was going to die, again, the disciples could not get on board. So Jesus spells it out again. Even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, he came to serve others. He came to give his life as the price for setting many people free. When Jesus died on the cross, this supreme act of love, he assured us that we have a place in God's heart. The cross says that there's nothing that we can do to get into God's good books. In Christ, we are already there. And because we have this security, this place, we don't need to push other people around to maintain our position or improve our status. We are safe in God through his sheer love, not because we've made a good impression on him. The converse is true as well. We are loved by God even when we have made a mess of things, hurt others, stuffed up, acted horribly. We are the little ones who bring nothing to God but our brokenness, our need, our sin. Jesus welcomes with open arms anyone who turns to him. Child, adult, he doesn't turn anyone away in need. Lord Jesus, teach us to put others before ourselves and fill us with the joy of serving you through the servant love you have shared with us in your cross and resurrection. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and peace, thank you that we can always find our place in you. Thank you that we belong to you and no one can take that away from us. We are secure in your loving arms. We need never be afraid to ask you anything.
Amen. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen.